What's going on guys, my name is Renegade, today we're here to ask and answer the question, how good is Shadow Stalker of Time? Now, Shadow Stalker of Time is the exact same class as Shadow Walker of Time, so keep in mind that everything I'm saying in this video applies to both of those classes. First of all, we'll talk about how to obtain Shadow Stalker of Time. So Shadow Stalker of Time specifically is obtained by going to Chronix in Babylon, and uh, of course that's at slash join Babylon. Chronix is in the second room, you talk to him, you purchase the time lock key from him, that costs 6,000 ACs. Once you have the time lock key, that unlocks the Shadow Stalker of Time shop, at which point you can then purchase the Shadow Stalker of Time full set, including the class, for 0 ACs. Like I mentioned, this is also Shadow Walker of Time. Um, Shadow Walker of Time is uh, purchased from getting the 2017 calendar and uh, so yeah, it, the costs are sort of relative, I guess, but the reason why AE did this is because people have complained in the past about how the calendar classes are great and they're, they're, you know, everyone wants them, but it's just a bit daunting for a lot of people, especially those who live rurally, um, when they want to get the calendar shipped to them. You have to get the calendar shipped to you if you want calendar classes up until now. And often the shipping cost is just as much as the cost of the calendar itself, so people often just disregard it. Well, they're just selling you this for 6,000 ACs now, so while the cost is high, you can still put the money down and get it, and you don't have to pay for shipping or anything. You can reliably purchase this class. Now on to enhancements and weapon range. For the enhancements, it was pretty easy for me. My process of picking an enhancement is I first of all go to the game myself and test the recommended enhancement and I say, uh, you know, is this is this enhancement that the, the game itself recommends to me, is this good? And I use it and it's like, yeah, it's, it's okay. So that's what I did in this case. I used hybrid and it seemed okay. I then go to the community and I ask as many people as I possibly can, you know, what's the enhancement for this class? In this case, I was told luck over and over again. So I then went to... Uh, a monster tried to solo it, and I found that luck seems to be better than hybrid. I found that. Now, generally, what then happens from that point, if the community recommends more than one enhancement, they rec recommend maybe thief, maybe fighter, maybe luck, you know, I then go and test the range of, of enhancements in depth. Because if some people are dedicated to telling me that a certain enhancement's better or worse, then generally that's probably worth testing fully. But in this case, it was all luck, and luck seemed to be better, so luck's the obvious choice. No need for in-depth testing, it's a waste of time in this case. So, luck it is. Weapon range was a similar situation. I tested out some weapons, and from what I could tell very early on, I found that unstable weapons gave me lower overall damage output, and I'll get into that later um, as to why that is, essentially. But as for now, just know that stable weapons are better for this class because you hit harder. All right, this is the part of the video that I've, I was really, really dreading, um, especially when testing out this class and stuff. When you first pick up this class, it's very, very, I guess, temperamental because of a lot of different effects you have to keep in mind and all that and there's a very specific combo that I was recommended that uh, really helps you out a lot and I'll get into that in just a sec. The passives on this class are just pretty straightforward. You have a rank 10 passive and two rank 4s. Your rank 4s are increasing your endurance by 25% and increasing your damage output, crit rate, and crit damage by 12%. Your rank 10 passive is you freeze three opponents in their shadows and you increase your haste, and that's but that's a very rare chance for that to happen, so it's really not worthwhile talking about. Um, but either way, the abilities themselves, this is what I'm dreading, because this class is very difficult to use when you first pick it up, and it's very daunting. Um, however, I do think it's a high, sort of high skill, high reward thing. And I did mention skill, and it's skill's a very, very, uh, very rare thing to have to have in AQW. Either way. Your mana consumption, I guess, is, is one really important thing to keep in mind, and this is going to be one of the only times I ever recommend that you use a mana vamp, which is at slash join museum, you talk to the NPC there, you go to the uh, ore enhancements, and you enhance this class, your your weapon rather, with a mana vamp ore enhancement. I, I know a lot of people aren't familiar with those, which is why I don't usually recommend them, but mana consumption is a bit of a problem for this class if you aren't careful so if you're just using this class just beginning and you just want to use wanting to learn it then i do recommend a mana vamp okay either way auto attack i'll explain the tooltip i'll read the tooltip in full 
for all of the abilities, and after I do that, I'll explain what the abilities do and just kind of summarize. The tooltips are confusing, and they are long, and they're, you know, they're very wordy, so I'll just explain the tooltips in full, um, and then, of course, I'll explain what they mean and what they do. Auto attack is called Rift of Shadows. This is ability one, by the way. I'm considering the abilities numbered by what their actual numbers are, just so it's more clear or whatever. I don't usually do that, but just I thought I would today. Ability number one, your auto attack, Rift of Shadows, 1.5 second cooldown. Applies Chaos Rift, which is used for other abilities. Each attack also affects you and your opponent's sight, lowering your opponent's hit chance by 3%, while increasing yours by 3%. If Temporal Eclipse is active, each attack will affect you and your opponent's focus, lowering your opponent's dodge chance by 3%, while increasing yours by 3%. Both stack to 5 and last for 10 seconds. Okay, so you apply Chaos Rift. Keep that in mind for later on. I'll, that, that comes into, into play on your last ability. You pretty much do a couple of things which increase your survivability. That's really it. The important thing to, to remember here is the dodge chance is increased by up to 15% and that lasts for 10 seconds. That's pretty much it. Just, that's all that the, that ability really does. Ability number two, Exude slash Devour. 15 mana, 6 second cooldown. Strikes at the blink of an eye, causing up to two opponents' existence to slowly fade. Deals moderate damage and applies a moderate DOT for 6 seconds. If Temporal Eclipse is up, shreds the opponent and feeds off their shadows. Deals moderate damage and applies a moderate HOT to the caster for 6 seconds. So they actually kind of repeat themselves a little bit there. Basically, uh, and that just adds to the confusion. Basically, this ability here, you strike your opponent, you do a moderate DOT. If Temporal Eclipse is up, you get an HOT for 6 seconds. Easy peasy. Next ability is called Vendetta slash Umbral Stigma. 30 mana, 6 second cooldown. Deals moderate damage and increase increasing the damage the target takes from all sources by 20% for 10 seconds. If Temporal Eclipse is active, the target's singled out, and after a short moment, you kind of do a big nuke, you echo the damage based off the damage you've done in the past 10 seconds. Okay, so you increase the damage the target takes by, from all sources by, by, uh, for 10 seconds. So you basically get a damage increase. So one thing to remember is you kind of want to apply this early on in the fight, but at the same time, this ability is also your nuke. Um, and so you kind of want to apply this once and then apply it again. This ability has a 6 second cooldown, so the damage increase lasts 10 seconds. And you also can get a haste buff later on as well. So 6 seconds and the, ha and the damage increase is 10 seconds. So if you can keep this ability applied, then you have a consistent damage buff, which is really useful. Now the Temporal Eclipse stuff that I'm mentioning... You, with the combo I mentioned, you really want to just have Temporal Eclipse active for as much time as possible. So pretty much consider the Temporal Eclipse effects as just normal effects. Um, so the Echo thing there, then that's your nuke. That comes in the form of a DOT, so it can't crit. So in the background gameplay, you'll hopefully see some uh, some DOT damage in there that's uh, really, really high, and that damage is probably coming off of this ability here, ability number three, which is your nuke. Essentially how that works is it gets the damage you've done in the last 10 seconds and, uh, and kind of hits it on the enemy, I guess. It's not a full reflection. It doesn't take all of it into account. It doesn't, like, add it all up and bash it back on again. That would be too unreliable. It essentially, I guess, it just measures it, and if it's high, you'll get a high nuke. If it's low, you'll get a low nuke sort of thing. Um, and that's really, really important to remember. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned to use a stable weapon, and this is why. If your damage is all over the place, which is what a unstable weapon will do, it'll make your damage um, vary more, then your nuke, your nuke is going to vary more. And generally, what that amounts to is your nuke being lower on average. So... A stable weapon makes this nuke higher, and this nuke's really good. Like, it's 15k when you uh, when you fully ramp up this class and start using the combo effectively. This nuke is like 15k, so you really are going to get... This This is going to be most your damage. The moderate damage numbers that keep getting mentioned in the tooltips, those, those, those numbers are like 2k max. Like, really not high numbers at all. The nuke, on the other hand, is 15k, so you really want to get that nuke reliable. So that was all for ability number three. Keep in mind, it's your nuke, and it's your damage increase. Your next ability is called Silhouette slash Shadow Warp. 
This doesn't consume any mana, and it has a 12 second cooldown. Sacrifice your life force to constantly warp through the shadows, increasing your dodge by 300% for 4 seconds and dealing damage to up to 3 foes while focusing their attacks on you. Now when it says sacrifices your life force, this actually doesn't make you take any extra, it doesn't cause you damage. If you just use it and don't have any other effects in play, you don't actually take like an amount of damage as, as, as cost for this ability. You don't like straight away get hit with, a, with an effect. You don't straight away take damage. You, uh, you really only do that once Temporal Eclipse comes into play. And so if Temporal Eclipse is active, you strike from the opponent's shadows for moderate damage, you gain 30 mana back up to two, um, after 2 seconds, and you uh, caused health damage after 2 seconds as well. So if Temporal Eclipse is applied, you gain some mana back, you gain 30 mana back after 2 seconds, but you also have health taken away from you after 2 seconds, and that health taken away is about 500, so keep that in mind. If you're trying to survive, if you're, gonna, if you're in a bad situation, make sure Temporal Eclipse isn't active and apply this because this ability will increase your dodge chance by 300%. Now, the unfortunate thing is your heal, your first ability, um, uh, your second ability rather, your heal, um, that heal is only applied once you have Temporal Eclipse active and ability number four sacrifices your health if you have Temporal Eclipse. Uh, eclipse active so uh that's a bit of an unfortunate thing i guess from temporal eclipse now finally onto temporal eclipse your fifth and final ability it consumes 30 mana and has a 15 second cooldown emits total darkness applying shadowed state lowering up to three opponents hit chance and negating their crit chance by 30 percent for five seconds you access new abilities as you warp through shadows applying temporal eclipse increasing your hit and crit chance by 80 percent this lasts 5 seconds. If Chaos Rift is active, which is the auto attack effect, applies Turbulent Rift, doubling your haste but increasing the damage you take by 20% for 5 seconds. Keep in mind this ability is a 15 second cooldown. Okay, so your combo, your combo. Alright, so your combo is going to be, and uh, this is going to sound a bit weird at first, and I'll have some prompts and stuff on screen, so make sure you're watching the video at this stage. Your combo, 5 Three, four, two, wait until ability five shows its cooldown on about two thirds. I'll have an image on screen for that so you can see what that looks like. And then hit three again. That last hit of three will be your big nuke, your big, big nuke. And keep in mind this combo only works if you've got uh, Chaos Rift already active, which is your auto attack. So, auto attack once, this applies Chaos Rift. Then apply Temporal Eclipse. That increases your haste and uh, lowers their hit chance, applies Temporal Rift or whatever, Eclipse or whatever, and starts off your combo. You then apply number three to do a bit of damage, not much, just a bit of damage, and that that's, I guess, adding to your total damage in the last 10 seconds thing that you're going to need to count up. Then you apply number, f number four to gain some mana back after two seconds, but that'll also cost health, so to regain that health and do a bit more damage, you apply number two to get your DOT active and to get an HOT active. And finally, after the cooldown is right, after after the right amount of time has passed, which sort of, I guess, the stars align and, you know, the, the right effects are in play, you then apply number three and bang, you get a big nuke. And that big nuke is about 15k with a stable weapon, with luck enhancements. I'm level 85, keep that in mind. Wow, this class is really, really complex. Really complex. Really, really amazing, though. I love this class so much. Um, so what does all of this amount to? Well, it amounts to some pretty pretty damn good DPS. This The sacrifices you make... Uh, um, the sacrifices you make are your... Your, I guess your, um, your, your, your health. You really don't heal that much, much health back, and you do sacrifice your own damage, your own HP a little bit there. The two things that really affect your health is your temporal eclipse, which, um, if you apply it with, with the haste buff, you're also increasing the damage you take by twenty percent. Then you're also gaining back your mana, but that is also costing health to you. And on top of all that. Your uh, HOT you get is actually only about 250 and it lasts 6 seconds. So you get 1, 2, 3, 3 ticks. 3 ticks of 250, which is, yeah, it's, it's enough to stay alive during 99% of, of boss fights in the game. 
But, you know, for the harder ones, like Blood Titan even, like Desolich, like all those sort of things, you're really not going to be able to do those um, either at a good speed or at all. I personally was not able to solo Blood Titan. Maybe I just need to practice more. Maybe I need to use a different combo. But either way, not using this combo will probably amount to this class being pretty useless anyway. But that's fine. You don't need this class to be the greatest soloing class. It deals good damage. I... I I haven't fully compared this to other classes yet. I'm going to do that at some other point. I'm going to be, of course, doing full, you know, this class versus this class and all that. So, again, leave in the comment section down below if you want to see this compared to other classes for soloing. Um, but it seems to be comparable. It seems to be up there with classes like Lightcaster, like Void Highlord, like um, Stone Crusher, all those sorts of things. So it does seem to be up there in terms of its damage output, which is great to see. It, does, it takes a very different take to all that, to all those sort of classes. So I'm very happy about that. Um, awesome, awesome class though. I really, really enjoy using it. It's a, a really, really fun to use. Super hard, super, super complex. But once you you figure out that combo, once you get that combo sorted, very, very satisfying to uh, to you know sit there for a bit and uh, and hit those fifteen k nukes over and over again. So, is it worth the six KCs? I definitely not, definitely not. You can spend, I believe Stone Crusher, you can't buy for two KACs, but I think you can buy two other classes and get and get it for four KACs or something else. I, th I think Stone Crusher is better for even for four KACs. I'm not entirely sure if I'm correct about that. My apologies. Lightcaster costs one KACs and it comes around once a year. It's seasonal. And that's, that's obviously a way better value for money. Um, classes like Legion Doom Knight are a uh, better value for money than this. But if you want something really interesting, really unique, really fun, and you've got ACs to waste, and you like the way you know Shadow Stalker of Time looks, because it's got a really nice look to it, it's got a nice aesthetic, then uh, by all means, spend those ACs. But there are better options out there in terms of value for money, but this is a unique experience. It's difficult, but it's unique, and that's what I really love about it. Um, like I said, it's a calendar class, so it's going to be rare at some point. I believe it'll be an, a year after... After it was released, so it's uh, I guess it's gonna be like February, April, May, uh, March, June, July sort of I guess area next year. It'll probably go rare, so keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, I, I've just got one one massive thank you to uh, a person that I was I was speaking to in Discord for a, for an extended period of time. Um, his name's Migo or Migo, Migo. So bad with usernames. I'm so bad with pronunciation. My accent is just awful for pronouncing those sorts of words. But either way, he helped me out a bunch with this. He gave me that combo. He sorted me out. He he put me all on the right track. I was super frustrated with this class at first. Really difficult to use. But uh, he 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 got me along the right right path. And he uh, he's still right now. I, I, I'm I'm talking in my Discord as I'm recording this video. And uh, yeah, he's he's helping me out. He's 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 uh. He's uh you know giving me tips and stuff. He's giving me images of like that cooldown thing. He's uh he's mentioning. So yeah, it's he helped me out a lot. Either way, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Like I said, mention in the comments in the uh, comments down below what what comparisons you want to see with this class. I'm I'm super super stoked to be able to do those now. Now that I've learned this class finally. So yeah, leave any comments about that in the comment section down below. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.